Hello, this is Randy Allen from Engraving Concepts. Today we're going to take a look at the Zing 16. This is the Epilogue Zing Laser. It's a desktop model. It has a 16 by 12 inch etching area. And we're going to just get an overview of the machine, take a look around the side here. Uh, this is the uh, control board panel. This is where you would plug in the Ethernet or the USB cable. And then it has the back side where the exhaust panel is located. We're going to show how to remove these panels for easier access to clean the back of the machine as needed. And then there's the serial number on the back of the machine. This serial number plate is what you should provide Epilogue Tech Support anytime you need help or service on the machine. Have that serial number ready to either email or put into a chat. And so that's pretty much the roundabout of the Zing 16 Epilogue Laser System. We'll take a closer look at the cleaning and maintenance here shortly. So now we're going to talk about the cleaning and maintenance of the machine and in the first part we're going to talk about is the optics. This is the mirror and the lens on the lens assembly. We have the inside of the machine, the door open, there shows the vector cutting grid table. With the machine powered off or certainly disengaged, we can move the carriage front to back and pull on the belt moving the x-axis left and right, giving us easy access to the lens assembly. Once we have easy access to the lens assembly, we can push the belt, the x-axis belt, slightly back out of the way. And then we're going to remove the top mirror. This would be the mirror that's above the lens on the x lens assembly. And so by holding that, we can twist the lens or the mirror out of its holder. And this gives us easy access to clean the mirror thoroughly. Once we have the, the mirror removed, we can take a look and inspect it for any scratches or cracks, making sure all the coatings are intact, making sure it's clean, good, and shiny. If there were residue here, then we would want to take the lens cleaner. This is the lens cleaner that came with the machine from Epilog Laser. And so you're going to want to order more from Tech Support if you run out. But taking a cotton swab, we can just gently take the mirror and we're going to twist the q-tip just wiping the dust and residue and the plastic uh, dust away from the mirror so we're not going to push down or hard we're just going to we're not going to scratch that we're just going to re be real gentle and wipe the residue off of that mirror to be sure it's clean dry and shiny Okay, so once our mirror is clean above the lens, we want to clean the lens itself. To do this, it's easier to get to that lens if we can lower the table down far enough, and then we're going to pull out the vector cutting grid table, and then while I have that out, I can show you that the front of the vector grid can be pulled out with those green cap screws, and we can, it would be a good idea at this time when you clean your optics to go ahead and clean your cutting grid, and you can do this with a... Um, a towel, a Windex, you want to make sure those exhaust vents are clean, you want to make sure that you have uh, pulled out all of the debris, the plastic that may be inside the cutting grid, and then you can wash that with Zep Purple or degreaser. So you can clean that as needed. Now we're going to uh, lower the table and if that's low enough we can reach underneath the lens assembly. We're going to reach under there, find the threads edge of the lens and we're going to twist that down and, and out and so that has a pretty long thread to it so we're going to unthread the lens from that assembly once that's unthreaded we'll have easy access to clean this lens thoroughly of course with the machine powered off we can move that back out of our way and then now we can inspect the lens to be sure that it is shiny that there are no cracks or scratches no residues or halos or making sure all the coatings there are intact if it was dirty at this point we want to take even more q-tips and some lens cleaner and we want to clean the surface both sides of the glass lens that you see there and use as many q-tips as needed we don't want to scratch with uh, a rough q-tip or debris or maybe metal shavings on a particular swab we don't we want to make sure that that lens is super dry and clean on both sides So once we're sure that we've gotten all of the dirt and residue off both sides of the lens, we're ready to slide that back into or thread that back into the lens assembly. 
So with our thread side up, we're going to reach under and just thread that back into the x-axis assembly. It's kind of long threaded, so just be patient. Find the threads and gently thread that back into the assembly good and tight. You don't need a wrench to tighten it down, but just really strong finger tight so that there's no movement. When you got it in there, make sure it won't slide back and forth, that it's in there snug, and that ought to be sufficient. At this time, we'll go ahead and put the mirror back in its holder above the lens, and that threads in nice and tight. Snug, doesn't have to bear down too hard, just nice and tight. And so that is the x-axis lens and mirror assembly cleaning. So now that we have the optics clean, we're ready to move into just the general cleaning of the machine. And of course, with the machine powered off or the disengaged x-axis, we can take the x-carriage and move that front to back and left and right. This allows us easy access to the back ports and the bottom of the system. So as we take a look at the back exhaust plenum, we see these portholes and these slots. This is where, as you're cutting wood or acrylic, a lot of the residue falls back in these ports. We want to make sure that these are all clean as well as the inside of the table. These lead screws, these vertical lead screws, also need to be cleaned and dried. So you want to make sure that we're always keeping the inside of the system uh, dust-free, clean, and dry. That goes for each lead screw in each corner. They don't really need lubricated just to keep those clean. So also, as you engrave a lot of dusty material like marble or uh, plastic, some of the residue may fall on the belt and the X-carriage. We want to make sure that this X-rail or X-carriage and the belt and all of the rollers stay super clean. We want to keep those dry and clean and all you have to do is really take something like a wet towel, uh, preferably something like a t-shirt um, to clean that. Now also if you get a lot of residue around your black roller bearings we want to keep those nice and dry and clean so you might want to use a Q-tip to clean each of those and also the belt and the places between the X carriage. So you want to make sure that all of the aluminum extrusion rail stays nice and dry and clean. So now we're going to take a look at the cleaning of the back of the machine. So with the medium point Phillips screwdriver we're going to remove both of these panels. There's a panel on the top and an exhaust port panel on the bottom. This top panel will expose just the back of the Y-axis motor rail, the drive shaft, and also other electronics. So we want to make sure that this back area stays nice and dry and clean. We want to make sure we vacuum this out periodically. And that may vary from shop to shop, but at least once a year you might want to pull the back panels off and be sure that you dust out each of these components. Now we're going to take a Phillips screwdriver and remove the bottom exhaust port. So by removing the bottom exhaust port, we're going to now see that we might need to clean this if there's a lot of buildup of dust on the panel itself. And then we have easy access with a vacuum cleaner, rag, or airbrush to blow out and, and get rid of all of the dust and debris around the back ports here. So this provides good strong suction to the exhaust fan so we want to make sure that this area is always clean with no obstructions of paper, plastic, or big pieces of dust. So with the machine thoroughly cleaned we're going to reinstall the exhaust ports back onto the back and on the top. These are captive screws so they won't fall out, they're easy to work with. Just replace both panels, make sure they're good and tight, and everything is cleaned up properly.
Demonstrating the modularity of the machine and maintenance, we're going to take a look at the control board. Now this control board is easily uh, removed and installed if there's any um, way that you need to get to it to clean it or replace it. These are captive screws, so you just take a Phillips screwdriver and then you can slide this whole control assembly pulling that out of its uh, mount or its bracket and that is a plug and play unit. So it just slides out. This is where you can come in and if you've got it in a real dusty uh, environment you might need to clean these pins. Just make sure it's all clean and dry throughout here. And then we can slide the control board back into its assembly. Very easy and simple to use. Now we're going to take a look at the other side of the machine. This is where the laser tube is located. So we're going to use the Phillips head screwdriver to remove the side panel of the machine. Okay, so here we have the side panel removed and we're taking a closer look at the laser tube. This is the uh, consumable of the machine, the laser cartridge. This needs to be all clean and dust free as much as possible. We want to keep these components dry, these Y-axis round rails clean. Uh, we want to keep the belts clean, keep dust free. So that's its biggest enemy is heat and dust. And we want to keep all this area super clean and dry. Okay, we're going to take a look at the laser tube here and we're going to get a closer look at the connections in the back of the laser tube. So this laser tube is the cartridge and there are a couple of connections. There is a red and black electrical power cord connection that's a quick connect that leads to the uh, screws. And then there's an ethernet cable that plugs into the tube directly. Now this laser tube is your consumable and that tube shoots a beam of light out of the front of the tube and it passes uh, and combines with the red dot pointer and so as the laser beam passes by the red dot pointer it uses and shares a mirror on the front side so it passes by and hits the front side mirror. Now this mirror on the front uh, like all the mirrors have a plate and this plate on the front side here has three allen screws. Now these plates have allen screws that are adjusted to steer the mirror in their correct alignment position. So there is a procedure for alignment of the laser beam. I'm not going to go over that here but I just wanted you to see what path the laser beam takes. So it comes directly out of the tube, hits this first mirror, straight up to hit the second mirror. And Again there are the three screws for the adjustments. And then after it reflects off of that second mirror it's actually going to pass through a window and through this window it will connect with the mirror that's on the carriage. So this plate right there with those three Allen screws are what catches that mirror as it passes from the front side of the laser tube through that round yellowy glass window and through that window to hit the mirror on the carriage. And once the beam has passed from the tube hitting the first mirror up the chamber to the second mirror through the window then that's going to contact that mirror that's on the carriage right there. Now once it reaches this mirror then it's going to be directed through the lens assembly on the carriage to the mirror that's just above the lens. So this mirror that is just above the lens is what catches the beam and then directs that down straight through the lens and that goes to the material. And so this mirror is what we clean and we want to keep those surfaces clean and dry. But that's the path that the laser beam takes. Just thought that might be helpful. I hope this video has been helpful. Thank you very much.